club head speed. We all want more of it. And in fact, I know a lot of you at home probably leave the golf course feeling like you just ran the Boston Marathon four times over. You feel like you are drained and you're probably working way too hard and not producing nearly enough club head speed that you know you're capable of producing. That's right, I know every single one of you wants to be more consistent and I know every single one of you wants to move every one of those clubs in your bag a whole lot faster than you currently do. And that's exactly what we're gonna be working towards today because I'm gonna be teaching you a step by step by step process that's gonna help you start to feel what it's like to move your body in the proper sequence and also be able to release the club where it matters the most, down here at the point of contact. Sequence is gold in the game of golf. You have to be able to accelerate and decelerate your body in a very specific order if you wanna be able to produce really efficient clubhead speed. But you also wanna make sure that you're doing this in the most safe way possible because so many people put themselves in harm's way and build golf swings that have really, really big robust movement that could potentially blow out a knee, a hip, or a back. We're not gonna do that here today. We're gonna do it the right way. So I wanna welcome everybody back to My Golf DNA. Hopefully everybody's having a wonderful day. And if you are brand new to the channel, do me a big favor, head down below and subscribe to the channel. And do me a favor, if you like today's drill, hit the thumbs up button for me. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post that up below and I'll help you out as best I possibly can. As we embark on this journey with today's drill, I want you to have sort of an analogy and a visual burned on the forefront of your brain that's gonna make it easier for you to understand where and when we start to put speed in the golf swing. And this is an analogy I like to use with a lot of our members on the website because it helps them see the golf swing in the same way that I do, but it also helps you kind of develop a really good tempo. Now, when you look at me from a face-on perspective, I'm gonna draw a box from my belt buckle down to the ground. This is your green section, otherwise known as your speed zone. This is where we want the golf club moving really, really fast and the body moving very slow. This is where we start to apply the brakes and let the club go. The second section, this yellow section from my chest down to my belt, is gonna be called the acceleration zone. This is where we start to get the hands and arms moving really fast. And how fast we move the hands and arms is gonna be very dependent with what you do with your legs and your hips. It's exactly what I'm gonna be teaching you here today. And that third and final section is going to be your slow zone. This is a very critical part of the golf swing. This is where we start to finish off the backswing. And this is where we start to change the direction of the golf swing. We don't need to be fast up here. And we don't need the club moving fast here. We need to accelerate and get the club set up for success down here. That's how I want you to approach today's drill. Now, as I start to take you through this drill, it's gonna be done in three pieces. Three, these three pieces need to be done in a very specific order and you need to get connected to the movements as I'm outlining them for you. If you get connected to these movements, then there's a pretty good chance that the next time you practice and the next time you practice and the next time you practice, every time you go out there, you're gonna to start to feel what it's like to be able to produce efficiency. And you're gonna get 1% better every time you practice. Step number one, what we're gonna be doing in this step is we're gonna start feeling our legs and our hips and the ground go through this very big acceleration and slowdown phase into impact. And you're gonna be doing this with your arms across your shoulders and you're gonna start feeling what it's like to use your trail foot to help get your movement started, but also to be able to slow your movement down. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I wanna bring an impact bag in. If you don't have an impact bag, get one. These things are great because they stop you at the point of contact so that you can back check your positions. And I'm gonna use this as a reference point for sections number one and number two of this drill. So if you don't have one, get one. I'll put a link in the description below. You can go ahead and pick one up. They're pretty inexpensive and they're certainly very handy to your practice sessions. Now, what we're gonna do here is I'm actually gonna demonstrate the movement first. I'm gonna demonstrate what it is that you're gonna be looking for. I'm gonna be talking about the checkpoints very much so. So I'm gonna take my arms, I'm gonna take my setup, I'm gonna cross my arms over my shoulders, and I'm gonna make sure that the leading edge of the bag is directly in line with my lead ear. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a small pressure shift to our trail side, we're gonna turn our body back, and then we're gonna accelerate the hips to getting to the point of contact where it would be taking place. Now your checkpoints at this particular section of the drill is gonna be making sure that your hips are open somewhere between 35 and 45 degrees. Your lead leg should be passively straight, your shoulder line should be perfectly square to your target line, and your trail foot should be rolled all the way to the inside portion. Now, that movement right there is very, very critical. And the reason for that is, is because that movement is gonna help get the hips started in the downswing. 
As that movement starts to happen, you want to pick up the pieces here from the lead side and you want to be making an aggressive move from the lead leg and lead hip. So how I want you to do this is I want you to go ahead and take your setup and I want you to go ahead and make a small pressure shift and a little bit of body turnover on your trail side. And now what I want you to do is I want you to start rolling to the inside portion of your trail foot. And you're going to feel your weight starting to shift onto your lead side. Now, when you focus on the weight moving through your lead ankle, what I want you to do is once you feel that pressure increase substantially, is I want you to take that pressure and push it down into the ground like you mean it. Push into the ground and rotate the hips back. When you do that, you're going to start feeling the ground. You're going to start feeling your legs and hips come alive. Using the ground and using your feet like this is a great way for you to actually be able to move your hips really quickly in space. So what we're going to be doing in section number one is we're going to be doing somewhere between 15 to 20 reps with our arms across our shoulders, working to get to those checkpoints. And as you start to go through your reps here, you want to start slowly picking up the pace. And every single one of these reps is very important. You do not want to go into section number two if one of these reps is bad. So follow along here. So we're going to put our arms across our shoulders. Good setup position. We've got the leading edge of the bag in line with my lead ear. Small, tiny shift onto my trail side, turn. Okay, I'm gonna roll to the inside portion of my trail foot. And as I feel that pressure getting underneath my lead ankle, I'm pushing it in the ground, rotating the hips back, and I'm stopping. My trail foot is rolled in. My lead, or my hips are open 35 to 45. My lead leg is passively straight. My trail foot is very light to the ground. Almost like you could put your mom's favorite Fabergé egg underneath the outside portion of my foot, and I wouldn't crush it. So we're gonna do these reps together, nice and slow at first. So little small pressure shift, turn your chest back about 45 degrees, roll to the inside portion of the trail foot, feel that weight go underneath your lead ankle, push it in the ground, open up the hips, stop. And I want you to start getting progressively faster as you go through the reps. And get really connected to what you're feeling through your legs and your hips. Okay, make sure you're hitting the checkpoints. And the goal is, is as you get to the 15 to 20 rep mark, is to do it at the speed in which you feel like is your normal golf course cadence. So I can feel the ground, I can feel my legs, I can feel my feet. The connection that I feel with my feet to the ground is helping me move my hips. It's also helping me slow the hips down. That deceleration, or that acceleration and deceleration that you just learned, is the whole kit and caboodle for the drill. If you do that movement with what I'm about to teach you in section number two, you cannot screw the party up. You have to be able to use your legs and your hips in the golf swing. So in section number two, you've just gone through number one and you're ready to start picking up the pace here. What we're gonna be doing in section number two is we're gonna now be focusing in on the arm and hip action sequence together. Now, where the arms come in from is what I'm gonna teach you, but I want you to understand that there are two big factors that move the arms from the top of the golf swing down into the speed zone. Now, these two factors are gravity. So if I were to go and elevate my arms into the top of the swing and not move my body, and just let my muscles and my shoulders relax, my hands and arms are gonna start coming down. And the second component is through the acceleration of what the hips are doing. That shifting and unwinding is now moving up the chain and pulling the rest of the body around. Here's an example. If I were to go to a nine o'clock position, okay, and I tried to hold my arms right here, and I took my hips and shifted them and opened them up 45 degrees, I tried to hold my arms up here, but where are they? Well, they're way down here in the speed zone. So you can understand that after you get fully shifted onto your lead side, your arms should have dropped down and they're starting to enter into that acceleration zone. This is where we're gonna start working from, is in the top part of the acceleration zone. And you're gonna feel what it's like to use your legs and your hips to pull them down and release it simultaneously into the bag. Remember, things are happening very quickly in the downswing. Now, as I said to you just a moment ago, we wanna make sure our arms are coming in from the correct spot. Now, to do this, what I'm gonna teach you is basically a way to preset your hands and your arms where they would be at the top of your backswing. So I want you to all stand up with me at home and I want you to hold your trail arm straight out in front of your body with your palm facing down the target line. I want you to feel a little bit of connection here between the top of your bicep and the top of your chest. 
and I want you to flex your trail arm ever so slightly, and I want you to turn your palm towards your face and just set your wrist. That right there is the position for your arms. Bring your lead arm in and the golf club in, and if you have your lead arm passively straight, not ramrod straight, okay, you have enough flexion in your trail arm, you're in a good spot, okay? Now bring your arms down to where your tricep just touched your chest. Go ahead and get into your golf posture and make that same shift and turn your body back to 45 degrees. Your arms and the golf club are now in the proper spot. Presetting the arms at first when you start going through this drill is exactly how I want you to handle business. Now what we're gonna do from that position is we're gonna make a small pump of the arms and the body to get just outside the acceleration zone into the slow zone. And as soon as the arms kind of go above that line, we're gonna start aggressively moving on our trail foot into that good impact position. And at that same time, we're gonna be snapping the club into the bag. Now a focus point for you with your trail elbow here is I want when you hit the bag to have the trail elbow put facing out in front of you. So what we're doing here is really getting aggressive with the legs and the hips slowing them down and same time we're snapping the club in the bag. So you're gonna be doing these two things simultaneously and it's gonna feel like you're throwing the club really quickly. That's exactly what I want it to feel like. It's not legs first and then all of a sudden the arms are just gonna show up 35 minutes later here, okay? It's happening quickly. So let's go through the whole protocol here and we're gonna do another 15 to 20 reps just like this. So arm out in front of us, flex it, okay? Lead arm in the club comes in, make sure it's passively straight. Bring the arms down to where my tricep is touching the, my chest. Golf posture, little small shift, turn to where my lead arm is parallel to the ground. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pump back, roll, and then snap it into the bag. And as we start to pump back and roll to the inside portion, you're still using that same leg and hip action and you're firing the club into the bag. Remember, your trail elbow pit should be pointed out in front of you. We're gonna repeat this process all the way through to 15 to 20 reps. Okay, see that little small pump back? As the arms pump back into the slow zone, I'm now using that as my signal to start rolling to the inside portion of my trail foot. I'm using the ground to open the hips up and I'm slowing everything down from that trail foot as I'm snapping it into the bag. Remember, focus down here first. Your hand and arm function, you should just feel like you are getting that club going really quickly. Those two things are working together. So even if you were messing up something with your arms, as long as your legs and your hips are doing their job, they're getting pulled down into the speed zone by what you're doing with your legs and hips. That's the whole purpose of the drill is feeling what it's like to have the legs and hips continue to move through to the point of contact and slow down so that the club is whipping past. Do one more rep, arm out in front, flex it, turn the palm towards your face, set the wrist, lead arm and club in, lower your arms down to your triceps against your chest. Make sure you scream on the water slide behind me, turn the chest, pump back, okay? Snap it into the bag. During those reps, you should be back checking that I'm on camera. You should be making sure that you've got your trail foot rolled in, your lead leg and your lead hip are in the right spot, your shoulders are square. If you're not in those spots, then go back to section number one and repeat the process. Come back to section number two and be disciplined in this process. Do not try to put the foot on the accelerator because I know every one of you at home is geared to be immediate satisfaction where you're trying to get to the end result first. How you practice this stuff and making sure that you take the time and be disciplined is what's gonna guarantee your success. Now, here we are at section number three. This is where things change pretty quickly. This is where we're gonna not have the club get stopped by the bag, but we're gonna start letting things release. Now, what I want you to start working on in these first five or 10 reps that we're about to do is as the hands and the arms start releasing the club in front of the body here, you start letting things fly. All of that tension coming out of the hands of the arms, you feel like it's snapping in the bag. What you want to remember is, is that as the club and the hands start working their way up above the speed zone into the acceleration zone, is I want you to be able to allow the trail foot now to start to roll up onto the toe. 
So what we're going to do to get this, this feel kind of dialed in and get it timed up properly is we're going to be doing some short to long swings just to get things warmed up for section number three. So we're going to go ahead and just make some little small swings back. Okay. We're going to roll to the inside portion of the trail foot, open the hips up, hands are passing in front all the way up. Okay, we're gonna do it with a little bit more fluidity though. Okay, and you're gonna start picking up the pace to start feeling your foot, release your body so that you can move up into a finished position. Okay, now, as you start to get really good at that, now you're ready to start trying to pick up the pace here and hit some golf balls. But this section is very important that you understand that what you just did in section number one and section number two, that you need to have your arms coming in from the same spot. If your arms have a lot of variance to them where they're deeper or they're more out in front of you, then you're gonna have to go down the preset route when you're starting to hit balls with this. Be disciplined, right? Now, I have worked on my golf swing enough to know that I can get my hands and arms into a pretty decent spot here. So I'm gonna be starting from a static address position. I'm gonna be doing a one to one to one ratio where I'm gonna be working on a kind of a slow speed swing. Then I'm gonna be doing kind of a moderate speed and then I'm gonna hit a shot and I'm gonna see how I do. Okay, remember you wanna feel the engine in the ground down here. Okay, so as the arms get up outside the acceleration zone, you wanna roll. Okay. Okay, that felt pretty good. All right, gang, so there you have it. This drill just walked you through the three pieces in which, on how I want you to work on things. You get connected to the legs and the hips and the ground. You feel what it's like to accelerate and slow down. You start working on syncing that up with your hands and your arms from the correct spot. Then you remove the bag and you start working on letting your body release after your hands and your arms and club get done in the speed zone. Once you get that all synced up and you start having a feel for the movement, then start picking up the pace and start having some fun and hit some golf balls. You're gonna feel what it's like to move efficiently in the swing shape. You don't have to be strong in the hands and the arms to be able to produce real clubhead speed. You need leverage, you need good breaks, and you need a well-timed release which is exactly what this drill just taught you how to do. Good luck, hopefully you guys play some good golf.